Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dave D Fishing. So in this video, we're going to be talking about some simple ways to go about catching crab, whether it be Asian shore crab, green crab, or spider crab. I'll talk about white legger crabs, aka Jonah crabs, a little bit, but I don't have any in this video. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a couple different types of crabs that you might be using for bait for blackfish, aka to tug. So the first and most common crab is the green crab that you'll often see and that's available in bait shops around your area. Um, good crab, I'm going to talk about some pros and cons to each of these crabs. So I like using green crabs because they are easy to get, they're readily available, and they're a decent sized crab where I feel like they're pretty versatile as far as ways to cut them. Um, they stay alive pretty long in the fridge, provided you take care of them. So disadvantages are that the underside, the belly side of the crab, I feel is a little fragile. Um, it's very vulnerable to pest fish getting ripped apart. So very similar to that of actually an Asian shore crab. The belly of the Asian shore crab, I feel is very soft. The, the top shells on both the green crab and Asian shore crab are very tough. Um, Asian shore crabs, they are pretty easy to get. You have to flip rocks and stuff. That's the normal way to go get them. You can buy them at the store. Um, they tend to run on the smaller side, so I often find myself putting two or three on a hook when the bite is really good because the pest fish will fly over and yank a couple off the hook, and I want one on there to give the larger fish a chance to come over. Um, they do, Asian shore crabs do live feel quite a long time out of water water in your fridge, provided you keep them damp and you cover them. Um, moving on to spider crabs. So I like using spider crabs. A lot of people catch them in their lobster traps, their crab traps, and throw them away. I, I ask you to give them a try as far as bait. They work excellent. There's a lot of meat in them. Um, they put a lot of scent in the water. The green crabs do a good job of putting such in the water. The Asian crabs, is not a ton of meat in there, so a pest fish can wipe that out really quick. So the same with the green crab if they're running on the smaller side. Um, spider crabs, really tough bottom and top shell. Um, the spider crab is a little harder to cut, which is okay. Um, I would deal with it. I'm okay with it. In the next videos that I'm going to be fishing for to tug, I use a couple spider crabs, and they work excellent. So spider crabs, easy to get. Green crabs, pre pretty easy to catch. Asian shore crabs, pretty easy to catch. You just have to put in some more manual labor as far as flipping rocks and that type of thing. Um, back to the spider crabs. So a con to the spider crabs is that, again, their shell is really tough. So you need a good, strong pair of scissors to cut through that. Another disadvantage is, is when you're catching them, sometimes they're pretty sizable crabs or even the little ones, like the ones where their leg spans are about five inches wide, their legs end up taking up a ton of space in your bucket. So you're not taking as much actual usable bait with you as far as the body of the crab. So you got to remember that. Now, if you're going fishing immediately, if you want, you can start trimming the legs off to actually put more bait in your bucket. Um, as far as the bodies of the spider crabs, so you have more bait available. If you're not going fishing right away, I would not cut the legs off the crab for, say, if you're not going fishing in six hours, don't do it. Um, spider crabs do not live very long out of water. I think I could get them to live maybe 12 hours out of water if I'm being nice to them and taking care of them. They're strictly a stand like in the water they need to be in the water as opposed to green crabs can be out of the water asian shore crabs can be out of the water for a good amount of time spider crabs cannot so if i had to pick between those i would probably take good size three inch wide green crabs and three to four inch wide spider crabs those would be perfect and then my last crab that i'm going to talk to you about is the Jonah crab, the AKA the white legger. I don't and won't put any of those crabs in this video because I didn't obviously go out to go catch them. So first off, if you're gonna go catch these white legger Jonah crabs, 
They need to be five inches wide to use, which is a pretty sizable crab. Um, you usually have to, if you're trapping them, that's pretty much the only way you can get them, is to go to an area of the ocean near you that's facing open ocean or pretty close to a, um, a deep channel. These crabs are similar to the spider, uh, spider crabs where they need to be submerged at all times. They're a deep water crab. So Jonah crabs, very advantaged to using them. Very juicy crab, lots of meat in it. Tough top, very tough top shell, very tough bottom shell. When you take the legs off, all the knuckle, the holes in those are very, very tough. They stay on the hook really well. In the past, I have used Jonah crabs and they I catch some really nice fish on them because the bigger fish are really the only ones that can crunch away and get to that hook and um, rip that thing apart. Smaller fish, they tend to shy away. Um, again, I would steer more towards, because of convenience and general size of the crab and keeping them alive, I would stay with, me personally, I like green crab and I like spider crab, both of which three to four inches wide, perfect. Asian shore crabs, too small. I don't like cramming a bunch of those on the hook. There are some, I have caught some larger Asian shore crab, which I have in this video. They're like two and a half, three inches wide, which is a sizable Asian shore crab, but I don't think a lot of bait shops carry that size personally. Um, so that's it. That's enough of me talking about the crab. So I'm going to show you how to cut up the crab to put on the hook. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can cut your crab. Does not matter whether it's green crab, Asian shore crab, white leggers, or spider crab. So the first way is to cut that crab in half. That is my favorite way to first interrogate a spot. So I pull up to a spot the first couple minutes. I'll drop a half crab down. I like doing this because it puts a lot of scent in the water, all those juices leaking into the water. Um, very quickly, you usually can tell whether or not there are fish there. Disadvantage is that you'll catch mostly smaller fish on it at first, so you'll have to weed through the smaller fish to get to the keepers. Another disadvantage is that all those pest fish can get in there within seconds and wipe all that meat out, which is unfortunate. You'll end up going through more crab, I feel, if you're having them, because of, mostly because of pest fish, smaller fish. Okay, next option is to cut a corner out of the crab, just like that. So, advantage is that the pest fish cannot get in there to steal the meat that in the, um, the juices in there that are attracting the fish over. And it also, it feels, intimidates the smaller fish and come over in the first place because it's a whole crab. And let's see, next option, you put a crab on like this. Seems to work very well. So advantages, most pest fish can't bite through that shell. Disadvantages, if there are smaller to tog around, they can probably engulf this thing. It's This is a pretty small crab. That's why I personally stay away from Asian shore crabs. They're generally on the smaller side, but they do work great, don't get me wrong. And the last option is to simply put your crab on whole. So advantage with this is that pest fish cannot eat it. The smaller ones, they can't get that in their mouths. It intimidates them. Um, good way to go if you know there are larger fish in the area and you know they're going to be on your bait pretty quickly, just drop a whole crab down there. Um, disadvantage is a weird one. I, I, I know you probably wouldn't think of this up front, but if you drop this crab down there like this, it's obviously, obviously still alive. So it hits the bottom and a tatog does not hit it right away or it's been a while. The crab can actually wander around on the rocks, on the bottom or substrate, whatever, what have you in the debris and get you tangled. Another disadvantage is actually for these two larger options is that when you're dropping the bait down, sometimes they will helicopter down to the bottom around your rig, causing you to tangle and the bait not to be present, presented very well. So those are the ways that I cut my crab. My favorite is sort of this mid, middle ground area where you still have some meat, a little bit of meat exposed and you still have that shell on, you still have the legs. Um, with these two options, I do like 
having keeping the legs on there because these sort of act like freebies for the smaller fish if they are around to peck at. And the smaller fish, when they're doing that, they can actually put more scent in the water doing that, but they're not taking your bait and you're not hooking those fish. So that's a good advantage and you leave the legs on this one too, same thing. So, okay guys, so I hope that helped you a little bit. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna show you how to put your crab on the hook. So first grab the crab by the sides. Be careful to not let it pinch you, obviously. So we're gonna go through the front knuckle where the claws are. It's my favorite place to go. So pull that off, be careful not to rip all the meat out. If you twist and pull, it'll come out a lot better. So grab your hook. You're gonna go through that opening that you just made. Right there. Just orient your crab so it's easier for you to gain access to that. So you're gonna press the point of the hook through there. You're gonna loop it around to one of the back legs, trying to get that point of the hook through one of the knuckles. You can feel it, you get used to it. It's like riding a bike. Like so. Snap that leg off and the point of the hook should be exposed. You can also do this with the legs cut off. The idea is the same. This is just how I do it when I'm going quick. It doesn't matter. As long as the crab looks like this with the hook in it, you should be good. If the point's not exposed, you're gonna be missing a lot of fish. Here, here's why you wanna be wearing gloves. You got barnacles on these rocks that will very easily rip your hands open. You got oysters all over the rocks, which will cut you. Also, you also have the slippery, slick rocks to deal with, so make sure you're wearing good shoes. So we're gonna start with some flipping of rocks at the end of the beach. Pretty easy stuff, pretty self-explanatory. Seems like common sense, but I have to mention it. Go for crabs at low tide. Check your tide charts beforehand. When looking for crabs from shore, you want to make sure you, you're flipping rocks below this waterline, which is indicated by the darker rocks. All right, so this is a good place to start. Just look for big flat rocks with obvious entry and exit points. And you go ahead and flip it over, and I expect to find some Asian shore crabs underneath this rock. And let's take a look. These Asian shore crabs are extremely quick, so as soon as you flip that rock, you got to be ready to pick them up. Sometimes I grab two or three at a time if I can. This is often where I get injured or cut because I'm getting a little too excited and I get myself in a barnacle. If you see seaweed like this on rocks, don't ignore it. Go over to it and just start pushing the seaweed around, pick it up, and more often than not, you will find crab underneath it. Especially in the warmer months, this keeps the crab moist and gives them a place to hide. There's one right there. Really small crab, but if you're really hurting for some green crab, this will do. This thing's about an inch wide. So this concludes the part of the video where we are looking for crabs from shore. If you do not have access to a trap, it is pretty simple. You just got to get ready to get your hands dirty and you got to do your research and some driving around to find some good spots. Next up, I'm going to be showing you my traps and how I use them. Now to the trapping section. So this is your basic wire basket crab trap. As you see here, stainless steel. I change this thing out a bit. I add a hook in the center just to hold that bait in place. And then I also change out those silly strings that it comes with. To pull the thing up um, with stainless steel leader material. So the way this thing works is it lays flat on the bottom and then when you lift the trap up it sort of um, cones down and envelops the crabs in there and allows you to bring them all up to the top. So pretty basic. So this is the crab cage that I dreamed up. All four doors used to fall down and just trap all the crabs in there when you lifted it up, but I zip tied them shut and I added this little door right here that I found on the beach. It's from a lobster trap. The crabs have a harder time getting out of it because of that piece. They have a hard time dealing with the rope and their legs get tangled. Just put a little door on the top to dump it out and put bait in. 
and that's really it. And again, make sure you have at least 50 feet of line to make sure you have enough rope to get down to the bottom. Pretty simple. Public docks such as this provide easy access for those who are looking to drop crab traps as they have plenty of structure to hold crab and they have a consistent presence of water there as well. As far as baits, I prefer to use oily fish like this bluefish right here. I also use false albacore chunks, mackerel, pogies. I don't really use anything as far as chicken legs. I've seen people use it, but I prefer to use oily fish as it makes a nice slick in the water for the crabs to find a little bit easier. In a pinch, you can use cans of cat food and dog food as well. It'll work just fine. So the basket is getting the same treatment of a bluefish chunk, so I always put a hook in there, as I said earlier, just to help hold that bait in place. So I'm just going to hook the bluefish to the tail, and that's it, and it's ready to go. With the basket trap, I always check it every 10 to 15 minutes because the bait is out in the open and other creatures like eels, larger spider crabs, and any a lot of other different types of fish can just swoop in and take large chunks out of it or just take the whole bait. So I always want to make sure there is bait in the trap at all times. Nice haul of crabs after a 10 minute soak. Got some very nice sized green crabs, some spider crabs, and one abnormally large Asian shore crab. So I'm about to get pinched by this thing. So this is a male with the big bubbles in his claws, has big claws in general. Um, normally when these things grab you, they don't let go. I got lucky this time. Very important to drain off the waste that the crabs are excreting. Otherwise this water slash waste fluid will build up and it will kill the crabs and it also smells very bad when you're transporting the crabs in your car. The cage is nice because you can leave it down longer than the basket because the bait is inside the cage which does not let other critters get in there and rip apart your bait and leaving you needing to rebate that thing a little more often. So and it also retains the crabs they have a harder time getting out so there's no rush. After this haul, by this time I have a half of a five gallon bucket full of crab, which is more than enough for a four to six hour trip for me. I ended up usually cutting them in half anyway. So very quickly filled half my bucket and it took about maybe 30 minutes or so, which isn't bad. Keep in mind that I also was using two traps as well. So in this video we covered the most basic ways for you to be able to get crab for your tatog fishing. First was looking for them from shore and then next there were some pointers on how to catch crabs using traps. I hope you guys found this video helpful or at least found it entertaining. If you did please give it a like and subscribe and watch out for my next videos where I'll be using these crabs for tatog.